I am Anthony F. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. My lecture today is Nichiren Shoshu Buddhist Racism. In 1998, my dear wife, Zuri Amani Elmore, and I made the decision that we decided together that I would go to Ghana because Ghana was the first Nichiren Shoshu temple in Africa. And we made the decision that perhaps one day we would have a child and maybe 20 years or 25 years later our son would become the Nichiren Shoshu priest or chief priest at the temple in Ghana. So I as a father, I mean, my wife was not pregnant at the time, but I was so dedicated to the Nichiren Shoshu religion that I went there to document it for my son because we wanted my son to be a priest. And this was in 1998. And surprisingly, what happened in 1998 my wife got pregnant because she was born on October 22nd, 1998. But now as I look back in retrospect, and every time I look at my son, it's kind of painful because I wanted that young man to be a Nichiren Shoshu priest because his dad was so dedicated to the Buddhist religion. Now. In 1999, after I went to Ghana and I saw all the evil things that SGR and Daisaki Kata did, and I got into this big fight with SGR members, but what happened was uh, the members in Memphis did not want to hear it because they were brainwashed. They did not want to hear what Daisaki Kata did to the uh, Buddhist members in, in Accra, Ghana. So, uh, this guy, as I said earlier, his name was Craig Bratcher, white guy. He was practicing at Mogyoji Temple in Chicago with me. And I asked Craig to help me, and Craig helped me to put together our website called The Proud Black Buddhist. Now, in 2010, that I had this website and a few people at the, at the temple at Taisekaji was talking about uh, the Proud Black Buddhist website. And of course that was Tony who was a, I guess he was an assistant Joto or a, some kind of lady to New York. And Tony made mention, Tony says, if anything was not of the priest, it was not real. Now, unknowingly, what I did was um, after having the conflict with Tony and Reverend Takahashi, I never thought any more about it, and I was the most dedicated Nichiren uh, Shoshu member. Each month I gave Dokyo, I made a donation to the temple, and I was so dedicated. But now in looking at this thing in retrospect, Tony did me a big favor because what Tony allowed me to do was Tony allowed me to see the real face of the Nichiren Shoshu priest. Now, this is what the priest did to me. See, I was wondering what was happening in our life and why Nichiren Shoshu priests would not come by and visit me because when we first kind of started going to Nichiren Shoshu meetings, there was Reverend uh, Sagano, who I love so much. I love Reverend Yoshida and Accra, Ghana, I thought they were such wonderful people. Now, this is what happened to me. The Nigerian Shoshu priests conspired against me. What they did was, they came up with a plan, I call it isolation. What they did was, they isolated me as a black man. What they did was, they were saying, we're going to discredit him. 
but we're going to do it in a very subliminal way. Now, understand, in 1999, and I want you to see a picture. This is a picture of my son. I had our son, my wife, take my son to Tai Sekaji Temple to get Goja Kai. You know, that is to, to join the Nichiren Shoshu religion, and I wanted him to go to at the head temple in Taisekaji. Now, in 2001, when I got into this conflict, what happened was, as I told you, T. Murray had told me they were talking about me at Tozan. Now, can you imagine? These people are supposed to be so dignified. And they're supposed to be so honest, and they're supposed to be so true blue. But what happened was, the brother says, man, they was talking about you at Taisekaji. And my priest in San Francisco, at the San Francisco Temple, told me not to associate with you. Can you imagine, I'm a Nichiren Shoshu member, and this priest in San Francisco tell my friend an African American, do not associate with Anthony Elmore. And what this priest did was, he told the lay guy, don't associate with me. Now, what was happening is that for all the years I am practicing and I'm a dedicated guy and I'm wondering what's going on. I was going back and forth to Ghana. I would go to Ghana three times a year. I would go to the head temple and I would go and I was wondering what was going on where I was getting all this cold treatment. In fact, when Reverend Morada left, uh, this is in 2008, Reverend Morada left Magoji Temple and went to Masenji Temple, I think in, in Washington, D.C. And the new priest came in, his name was Reverend Iwaki, who I showed you about earlier. Now what happened was, I didn't know what was going on, didn't know what was happening in Memphis, but I know things were not right. And what I told Reverend Iwaki, I said, Sir, since you are new, I want to help you to help the movement in Memphis, and I, I would like for you to come to the Dr. Martin Luther King Civil Rights Museum, and I would like for you to see and learn and understand the culture of Memphis, and together we can help build Buddhism. I was so dedicated. And what happened was, I put letters in writing, and I want to show you letters that I wrote Reverend Walker. Now, this is starting in March of 2008. And I wrote this man letters, but he never would respond to my letters. And it was just by accident that I had found that he had came to, he was going to come to Memphis, Tennessee. This man took my money every month, but he was not going to let me know that he was coming to Memphis. These guys had totally isolated me. What they did not want to do was they didn't want to do anything to help me get credibility. And I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know why I was getting such cold treatment. In 2006, as I showed you earlier, Reverend Morada had married me and my beautiful wife, Bogada Chu had, you know, met in, in Accra and in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I had an Ethiopian wife. And I had Reverend Morada marry us, and I was taking my wife to these meetings, and the meetings were so horrible, and we were treated so bad. And it was like a terrible thing. And everything I did, I, these guys were coming back and, and trying to destroy everything that we did. I had no idea what was going on. All I knew that it was horrible. It was a horrible situation I brought my new wife into to find out that these Nutrient Social priests had conspired against me. How horrible. Anyway, I now that I know and I look at my son, I says, Wow, what would have happened if I had made that boy or that young man become a Nutrient Social priest? That is not the right course. That is not the right course of African American people. I cannot tell people to deal with these people because they are not 
genuine and honest people. 